Evan. The following program is paid for by the Charlie Butler team. Looking for tips on selling your home? Tune in to the Charlie Butler Show right here on WGBF AM every Sunday at 9 a.m. The Charlie Butler Show where your questions get answers. Charlie guarantees it. Good Sunday morning, Tri-State. This is the Charlie Butler Real Estate Show. I believe I'm Charlie Butler. <laughs> I think so. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me check my driver's license here. But it's the one I've got in my pocket says I am. And as always, to my left is the district manager for... Churchill Mortgage, as he covers all of Indiana and Kentucky, David Crow. Good morning, David. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody's having a great day today. And then to David's left, I got to get my left and right straight here, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, no, where I have. Well, you're carrying morning. around somebody I, else's wallet in your pocket, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be, yeah, I don't know. And uh, is uh, the president of Butler DeArmond Real Estate, which owns the Charlie Butler team, is the lovely Candace DeArmond. You look, and you do look very nice today. Well, thank you. It was a really rough morning, so it was, it was not easy to throw this together today. It, it was a rough morning, huh? It was a rough morning. You want to tell us about it? I probably shouldn't on air. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, and to Candace's left, we have Casanova over here uh, who uh, has, you know, I've been thinking about something, guys. That's dangerous. Yeah, thank you, Jordan. I haven't even introduced you yet. You can't talk yet, okay? Uh, the uh, Jordan Rolls, our producer, who is going to be leaving us soon. Which, by the way, you're telling me these people are getting interviewed. We haven't interviewed anybody. Uh, I know it's it's not my decision either. So I I yeah. wish I could make the call, homie. <laughs> well, you tell tell a Don I expect to be consulted on this. <laughs> we'll do. Yeah, yeah. You know where you know where that'll go too. Uh, my <laughs> how much my cons- But Jordan, we're always hearing about your girlfriend over in Illinois. Yep. I'm starting to doubt that she exists. She doesn't. She's a figment of my imagination. That's what. That's what I. I'm I am absolutely crazy. I see people. It's very <laughs> schizophrenic. Surprise. <laughs> Well, we knew all the other stuff, but we didn't know you were making the girl up, too. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that leads to something else. That would lead us into let's find Jordan a date. Yeah. Uh, now, Charlie, I have only, to be honest. Only if we can find Charlie a date as well. Yeah, because I was going to say, due to social media, I know the girl exists. <laughs> oh, I have David, seen David the two of them. And the thing is, is Charlie's my friend on Facebook, uh, too. I was going to say, I've I, seen them at concerts, uh, one after the other, yeah. and spending time. So, she exists. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Candace, have you stalked Jordan? I have not. What's your last name again, Jordan? R- I know. R-O-O-S, like Roosevelt. Okay. You got that weird German last name. My dad's side of the family is in Spencer County area, and like... Two generations before them came over here from Germany. Okay, I'm looking. Well, you, it's oh, the there same you people are. who named Brett Favre. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. What's funny? What's funny? What's funny is I just googled my name over the weekend, and if you Google my name, there's an NFL player that has my exact name. Oh wow! Almost same. Uh, he has brown hair and a brown beard, uh, but same body stature and everything else. Yeah, please. For, for the ones listening, Jordan's not a petite young man by any means. <laughs> I am five foot six, yeah, one fifty. Right. Okay, <laughs> let's just say he's leaving some big shoes to fill here. As Literally he walks and figuratively. Away. Yes, Jor- Jordan. I'm, Go ahead, I just got, I'm all the way back to September 26, 2018, and Donnie Baker is the only person I've seen you paired up yes. with on yep. here. Donnie, good old Donnie Baker, rest so, in peace. I don't know. She might not be real. She's she, on there. She, like I said, I'm schizophrenic, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just see things randomly. Well, okay? you're, not help, you're not helping me get you a date, okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah okay, you're schizophrenic. Candace is the only person I know that dates you know, crazy guys, okay? So. Bill like a football player. That's definite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Bill like a football player. <laughs> Bill like a football player, shot put, thrower. And, but yeah, uh, I, I am off the market, Charlie. There is you are <laughs> off the market? Unless the date is with a puppy. I will take a date with a puppy. <laughs> no, okay, we're not going to go down that road, okay? <laughs> <Park. laughs> <laughs> I will take a dog to a cafe and we will have a nice coffee date. <laughs> okay. Well. Uh, <laughs> y'all need to get y'all's minds out of the gutters. I'm over here being innocent, wanting to have a good date with a puppy. Oh, 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 see, look at oh, oh, I don't know. Oh, okay, back, well. at, the, back at the real estate ranch. Uh, but uh, Jordan, how is uh, 
how's how's it coming the decluttering of your house it's it's coming <laughs> um cardboard boxes are expensive <laughs> i've learned that the hard way uh if y'all have any tricks about how to get cardboard boxes for free or cheap be greatly appreciated okay. grocery stores we'll help you right here jordan anyone having having cardboard boxes bring them to town square media <laughs> On the sixth floor of the fifth third building, and tell them that Jordan Jordan said to bring, bring them. Just, just okay? pile them up at the front. Said, Drop yeah, them just off. Just pile them up at the front. Right. Yeah. But no, like one box from Myers, like almost four dollars. Just yeah. one box, ridiculously yeah. expensive. Oh, you're a single guy. You only need three boxes. That's everything you well, own. Well, he's got a lot of <laughs> music. Yeah, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Oh, all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, I I got majority of it packed. Huh? You can buy them in bulk at U-Haul. I mean, they're they're, they're probably not, just as expensive at U-Haul. I don't know. I don't think they're too bad. A dolly to rent the dolly out of the truck was almost fifty bucks. I I went <laughs> to U-Haul. And I didn't have. And they come in. I mean, you have to put them together and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. The same well, ones for Meyer. Here's the thing, Jordan. If I'm working at U-Haul and Candace walks in wanting to buy boxes, Charlie's you walk in wanting to buy boxes. Candace gets a deal. For <laughs> Yeah, this is Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> what about you, David? Yeah. Hey, man. Do you have any wanna, boxes in here? I want to wear my Daisy Duke shorts yeah. when I go up there and see if oh that works. Yeah, I want to see that photo on social media. <laughs> uh, charging you double. <laughs> uh, oh, too funny, guys. Oh, so, uh, uh, David, before we're going to get to you in just a second, but Candace, what's David uh-huh. going to talk about today? The rights. The rights, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about those rights. <laughs> the, Amen. Uh, so, so David, I we were we were talking, and the uh, the ten year, which as those that don't know, the ten year bond, you know, drives a lot of the either down or up rates. So, uh, and it's down a little bit right now. Down a little bit. Mortgage backed securities is up, which is good. 10-year treasury down, which is good, all leading to lower interest rates. And we're going to probably experience those. Oh, they, they've been going down, okay? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and folks, if you're listening, I can't stress enough. I actually made a video this week and sent to a couple clients. And, you know, you look on social media, even some of the ads that pop up on TV, and you're seeing stuff like, you know, guy sent me a picture of the day. You know, hey, this one's 5.25. And I'm like, well, we're not quite there. And I have to express to people, or you see, and I'll even say this, uh, you know, Good Morning America, a lot of people, d- Today mm-hmm. Show, they even will say the average rate, the average rate, and they put that information on there. Now, where they are getting that rate is from one of the entities known as Freddie Mac. You have Fannie right. Mae, Freddie Mac, government entities. And what Freddie Mac is doing is they are only looking at the interest rate on loans they have purchased that have closed. They do not look at how many points a borrower paid to get that rate. So, unfortunately, you've had some people, and, I'm, you know, I'd say some of the online lenders slide things by and things I take for granted. I always try to do the best thing for the borrower. So, they're seeing a lower rate, but they don't realize that a borrower, God forbid, may have paid eight, nine, ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 in prepaid interest in the form of points to get that rate, right. which I think, honestly, knowing rates are going down, that is foolish because they're ultimately going to refinance in 2025 and get a lower rate without paying that. So, but overall rates have gone gone down, but I just want to say folks, if you're seeing things in advertisements, look at that small print and look at that points, 2.44, 2.78 points. A point is 1% of the loan amount. So if you're buying, you know, if your loan is $200,000 and it's two and a half points, I hate doing that to myself right now, but that's $5,000 in prepaid interest right. that you're paying just to get the the rate. That's not your closing costs. That's not your prepaids with the title company and homeowners insurance. That is just upfront prepaid interest in bulk to get that rate. And so rates are going down. That's the thing, Charlie, and I want everybody to understand. So if you're looking to buy, you need to get pre-approved. Um, rates are going to continue to go down. And uh, we're going to see that in the upcoming week. 
as Jerome Powell is going to make an announcement, and we're just waiting to see how many basis points he decides to drop that federal funds rate. Yeah, we're hearing more and more. We're hearing, we're hearing 50 points. 50 basis points is the uh, the number that's strongly being kicked around right now, which equates to half a percent. Now, right. that's not a complete half a percent on mortgage. That's the federal funds rate, which all banks and mortgage companies go to there to buy or right. borrow their money. To turn around and lend, which but, really, the, 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 just so people know, the Fed, when you hear that, well, it dropped half percent uh, or f- fifty basis points. Uh, that's that's not directly to the more, to the to the home mortgages. However, psychologically, psychologically, it is. And then you've got just like Churchill Mortgage, myself. There's ways that you can move those dollars around in expenses, and quite honestly. It could equate that if Jerome Powell drops 50 basis points, a mortgage interest rate may, based on knowing what's coming up in the future, you may see half point drop on on rates. We're already seeing rates lower. And, folks, we're, rates are lower because we're already baking in some of these numbers in the finance side of it, knowing Jerome's going to make a cut on September 18th. And so, So how do you feel about the rates right now? I feel uh, good. I'm, I've been quoting uh, in the low sixes. There was one instance with a small, small amount of point that I was at 5.875. So I am seeing, especially on the government loans. That's one of the things I need to stress is government loans, FHA, VA, USDA, those will be lower rates than your conventional loans many times because they are insured of the federal government. Conventional loans are not. So conventional loans are uh, slower to come down, especially if someone is putting a 5 or 10% down payment versus, hypothetically, a 20% down payment. Uh, but ultimately, we're I'm seeing rates in the sixes for sure. No question on that. And we're starting to dip into the high fives. Ooh. Yeah. And so that's why I'm saying some of the advertisements you see are showing like 525 and that's ultimately to, you know, the people are paying points. And my suggestion would be not to actually spend the money to pay for points right now out of your pocket being the buyer because rates are going to continue to go down in 2025 and you are going to want to refinance at that point. Yeah. And so, Candace, uh, you work with a lot of buyers mm-hmm. and sellers, but you, work, you do work with a lot of buyers. Mm-hmm. Uh, how important, I mean, of course, I mean, stupid question rates are important, but how much do you hear that now? You know, I do hear it quite a bit. Um, I know we've touched on it before, but a lot of times if the payment is where they're comfortable, that's where they'll go. Right. Um, but you do have, um, you have buyers that are, they're, they're watching the market. I mean, I have a lady right now that we had kind of put things on hold for a little bit and we've seen a little bit of a drop and, um, and, and she's, paid attention to where that would make her payment on the same amount that she was going to get before. So, um, so I, I do hear it, but ultimately I think people are more concerned about the payment than anything. Well, I think it's always the case. I, and I don't think, I think it could be whether it's a car, yeah, a house, who cars? Car, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the, that cut into your wealth building process yes, right there, will. right now. Yes, <laughs> or actually, car insurance right now. Oh, Amen. Or no kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you so, all can't see us, but we're all shaking our heads up and down the studio. Like, as Charlie say car insurance. Car insurance. My car, so I pay every six months to try to get that little bit less of a payment. Yep. Uh huh. And I've only been in like one wreck, and it wasn't even like a major incident or anything. And it went up you almost. Only one person got killed. Is that what? <laughs> yeah, only one. Okay. Uh, it went up almost three hundred dollars. Yeah. And I'm like, where did this come from? And I called my insurance company. I was like, why is there an increase this much? Like, I haven't done anything for this increase. They're like, it's just inflation. And I'm like, that's a great excuse. That's the big yeah, one yeah. out there for everything. I, according, I know. I, I, one of the reports that I saw about inflation was that car insurance, or not just car insurance overall. Was the number one driver? It was. It, it, You're talking about the inflation as, data we've as, all been seeing. Far, yeah, as far as going up, yep. it was uh, insurance overall has went up eighty percent. Yeah, overall, that's probably an accurate statement. And see, I see year over year data, and just year over year. Okay, so we we forget in 2024, 2023 was a bad year. 
Okay, we had already gone up yeah. in 23 from 22. Mm-hmm. And so now they want to say, well, car insurance is up 23, 24% year over year. Mm -hmm. Well, they're looking at 23. Right. And add another 23 to 24% on top of, you know, the year 2023. And that was already a horrible year. So when you're talking about 80%, that sounds accurate, especially if we're measuring pre-pandemic. If we're looking at what we were paying hypothetically in September of 2019, and fast forward five years to 2024, it's astronomical on what insurance has done nationwide, everywhere. Now, now you two have it really cheap, though, because I know you got a teenager and you got 22 years old. So <laughs> oh, my that, gosh. That really drives the rates <laughs> down, doesn't uh, it? Yes. Yeah, drop it down. Yeah. just paid my insurance, and I do the same thing. I pay six months because I want that discount. And um, Mason or I, knock on wood, we have not been in accidents and, you know, no tickets or anything that would cause our rates to go up. And I paid 1800 bucks, and he has a 2010 Ford Focus. I, I, I get <laughs> like, it. I mean, we're insurance. I mean, we've got some of those uh, 2011, 2012 autos in, in my lineup with all of the kids at home. And I'm a proud father. Proud father. I bought my son. Uh, uh, honestly, 16 years old, I bought him a, uh, from a friend a 2005 Camry. Uh-huh. And guess what? It was in great shape. But I know that sometimes young young men make poor decisions. Yes, they do. I felt comfortable <laughs> putting him in an 05 Camry uh-huh. as that first one. He totaled, talk about insurance, he totaled his own car, single person wreck in a parking lot. Oh, <laughs> parking lot. My son totaled an 05 Camry in a parking lot all by himself. Tried to tell me, Dad, I was only going 30. He didn't realize there was a 90 degree turn and that uh, concrete box curb and that passenger tire didn't uh, connect well. And when I showed up, the, the wheel, the tire and that big giant spring were laying in the grass out there beside it. 30. So my insurance rates are even uh, higher due to... Uh, my son there on that one. So, yeah, right. proud daddy moment. How, how would you like to be this guy's friend of mine? Used to be my CPA when I was in Illinois. Uh, he just graduated from college, and to celebrate, he bought. And you may not be old enough to remember this, can but you remember when Triumph was a really hot? Oh yeah, I remember car. Triumph. Yeah. Yes, I do not. Okay, yeah, yeah. it was a real, it was a really mm-hmm. neat sports car. Mm-hmm. And so David buys a brand new Triumph, and we had a. The old-fashioned Dairy Queen where you walked up to the yeah, window, you know? Yeah, So, and, and everybody hung out in the parking lot. Yes. The parking lot over there. Yeah. This kid in an old beater station wagon comes around there, and he, and David's up there talking to, to me and some other guy. Hits his car, totals it. Oh, my gosh. You know, and the kid didn't have any insurance. Oh. <laughs> So you have that uninsured, I, underinsured yeah. coverage on your policy right there to cover that one. Do you remember my high-speed chase that I was in where I got hit in the high-speed chase? That oh, yeah. I insurance. About that. Who were you thing. running from? I was not running from anyone. <laughs> Apparently, somebody stole, it was that Coconuts, that little video and the, CD the, place yeah. over oh, in oh. on yeah. Green River Road on a Friday night at like 6.30 at night. I'm right by Longhorn, and I, I'm hearing sirens, and I pull over. It's, it's you know, You know traffic. something's coming. Yeah, yes. lots of traffic. And the police were chasing a lady that stole, I guess, DVDs from Coconuts, and she hits my car, jumps over the center line, goes the wrong way to get on the expressway, and they lost her, and that was all me. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm... I'm not going to comment. I feel sorry that they lost her here locally. Yeah. Couldn't find I, it. I, I was, the wrong way. I was a little <laughs> mad that they even chased her yeah. over the DVDs over the, over the that DVDs, she stole yeah. or whatever it was. Oh, I was like, why were you even doing it? We need to I'm, figure out how long ago this is. Find the news article and see what DVDs. It was 2020. Uh, 2020. <laughs> 2020. Well, they, they never caught her. So oh that was goodness. a... So Candace I want to know what CD she got away with. I do too. And everything. I, I do too. That's what the high speed chase was on that day. Yes. Sure. She, had to, she had to get my big fat Greek wedding video. <laughs> yeah. <TV>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> George, George's got an autographed uh, 
DVD in his collection from this woman. Uh, probably. You owe me that DVD. So we could do an America's Most Wanted here. Can you can you describe her, Candace? No, I didn't yeah. even see her. Okay. She was in a, a, a green Dard Dodge Charger with no plates on it. And, well, it had uh, Tim Tags from Kentucky. And they said that's why they couldn't. That explains race. everything. That so, but Tim Tags was running around Evansville. Yeah, right. why, why did they do a high-speed chase for DVDs? That is my exact point. I have been so mad about it for four years. I've been mad. (laughs) I have been furious about it. (laughs) Yeah. And then I sat there for like two hours in a parking lot waiting for police to come because oh, yeah, they were busy. Report. Yeah, they were busy. <laughs> Chasing. Trying to find somebody going the, the wrong way that, on the Lloyd. Right, that they lost. <laughs> and they were like, well, we had to stop the chase. It was too bi- It was uh, too dangerous. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah. 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 Tell it to my car. They're like, well, unfortunately, we didn't get her, so you'll have to turn it into your insurance. Is that so what happens like, when, like, ah! when like Batman or Spider-Man like destroys the city and yes. then your car gets smashed? Yeah. Like, huh? I'm sorry. It's the Hope Batman had, tax. Okay, really good insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Hulk smashes your car. <laughs> yeah. It was Hulk. Can't do anything about it. That's yeah. funny, guys. That was my. All right. So, guys, back, let's wind this. I've reeled you guys back in here from the. Industry. Well, the right. Yeah, keep in up. mind. Right. Keep in mind. <laughs> this all came out of inflation data. That's where all these stories stem from is inflation and, and, and insurance, which is really, in all seriousness, it, it's been a struggle being in lending and for, um, I guess, in, in terms of wanting rates to come down. The Fed has held rates higher based on inflation. And unfortunately, insurance has been one of those things that have kept inflation high, which didn't, we just couldn't understand how holding the funds or the Fed funds rate higher is going to help lower insurance. Mm -hmm. So that's baked into that uh, data we receive on a monthly basis, and we just can't find the correlation to higher interest rates is somehow going to make uh, insurance costs go down. And it's not. Mm -hmm. So, You know, Candace, something just hit my mind. Wouldn't it be funny if, and you in some way get some revenge here, if Mindy Woodward and those that don't know Mindy, our foreclosure specialist, goes, and she forecloses on a house, and there's a green... Dodge Charger. Yeah. Let me hand them that pie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going to bake them a pie, huh? I will. I will come right with Mindy to give that pie to them. Yeah. Too funny. Yeah. But, uh, Candace, uh, we were talking, and we never really got into this, and I'd ask this to both of you, but, but uh, do you find this to be true? There's a, there's a national study out now. It says eighty six percent of the P- of the renters mm-hmm. do not believe they can buy a home. Oh, I absolutely that's true. I mean, I, I have there has been a lot of clients that I've ended up with, and they were renters that said, "Oh, I, I can't afford it. I, I can't buy a house." And, and, and what I mean is it? And I know a lot of this people think they got to have twenty percent down. Mm-hmm. Is that yeah? That, is that still prevalent? Yes, and people also don't always. They don't know what their credit is and they don't, they, they have no idea sometimes. And they're like, well, I had a, I missed a student loan payment one time, you know, for about six months. I went through a hard time. Well, when was that? Yeah. Well, it's been about 15 years ago. I've been paying them since. Oh, they're paid off. Oh, that's an exact conversation yeah. I've oh, had yeah, with I... someone. It's like, oh, you need to talk to a lender. You know, that's a, so yeah, it, it's, that's, yeah. I know a few, many years ago now, uh, it, uh, Dave Clark, mm-hmm. and I always know Dave, Dave was selling a house on contract. Mm-hmm. And I'd, I'd brought the buyer, and we're sitting there at the closing, and she, and she says to Dave, she said, you're, you're a lender. Maybe you, maybe you can give me some information here. And he said, because she talked about how bad her credit was. And she said... Uh, uh, I was 30 days late three years ago on a payment. <laughs> mm-hmm. He says, uh, uh, and she said, what should I do? Dave says, so what else? And she said, oh, so that's the only thing. She says, I've paid everything else perfectly. That contract sale didn't happen. Yeah, we. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The mortgage, she bought yeah. a home. Yeah, exactly. Guys, I can tell you, and, and I, I'm saying this to everyone listening to us, get pre-qualified. Okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. and the reason yeah. I'm saying that is, Candace, just this just this week, I can give two stories, 
They fall right in line with what we're talking about. Both of them are renters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of them, it, it truthfully, they, they really didn't think they could be pre-qualified and they're being responsible. First thing I'm going to say, if you call me, it is free. Okay. It's free to get right. pre-qualified. Doesn't cost you a thing. And then sometimes people are like, well, I don't want everybody to know my information. Yeah. Folks, if you're listening, all of us good Americans sit in so many databases. Our information's already it's out, out there. there. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, you're not, you know, the fact that you know your social security number and you think nobody else is going to know this. They I do. apologize. <laughs> yeah. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So get pre-qualified. And the fact of the matter is I have one gentleman that truly didn't think he could was amazed he could. He's paying a thousand a month in rent mm -hmm. right now. That's his rent, thousand. And we've got him on his way with a realtor and they're looking at homes. Okay. Yep. Now the flip side happens. I have an investor that uh flips homes. A lady called him to get pre qualified. He immediately said, Call David Crow, find out. They did. Now this young lady here, unfortunately, she had ten collection and charge off accounts. She had nine individual student loans, and the only thing she had was a $300 secure credit card. In her personal situation, her credit score was 560. No, I, I, couldn't, do it. I couldn't do a loan. Yeah. But I gave her a pathway to work on. It's not going to be a 30-day pathway. Right. right. But I at least let her know. But in both instances, at least get pre-qualified so that if you're sitting there, because right so now, her first teacher, she is renting. Yeah. But for the first time, somebody told her, okay, you cannot buy a home right now. Mm -hmm. And But these are the things, the steps you need to take over the next, you know. But the other gentleman, he didn't think he could rent or buy. Mm -hmm. He can. Yeah. And, and now he's out looking for a home and feels thrilled. Yeah. And so just... Get pre-qualified. That's, well, that's my message. Yeah. <laughs> I no, think, and absolutely. actually, these people did do the right thing. The one that you worked on the new construction that didn't Oh, happen. yes. Uh, the, the lender gave them. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I should say get pre-qualified with a qualified lender. Yeah. That, in, <laughs> that, that, in, that information. Very good point. Yeah. They, they love this $230,000 new construction. Yep. And so if I got to the point. Where the builder said, "Look, we don't care. You pick somebody that's reputable." And I m mentioned David, and they said, "That's fine. We just want we want to hear another opinion if, yep. if we're going to hang in there with this." Yep. And David called me back. He said, "Yeah." He says, "I can I can pretty qualify him for one hundred eighty thousand." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, as Candace could tell you, that is one of the worst things can happen uh, to a realtor that ties and, them up for yes. months. Well, yeah. and, and psychologically, yes. they, go, they go in there. And they think they can afford a four hundred thousand dollar house, and then you, and then they haven't got pre qualified, and they love this house. And Candace can take the yeah. right to write an offer. Maybe they do write an offer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, many times they do they, write they an they offer. They do write yeah. an offer, and then you can do two hundred fifty. Yeah, maybe you can do two fifty. Which is a nice home, right? Not, very not, nice. Not four hundred. But they've 000. already looked at four hundred thousand, and that's. Tough. Yeah, they're looking at that two hundred fifty thousand dollars shack, and they yeah. do not want yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, and then so then Kansas's job becomes that much more difficult. Also, yeah. very challenging. You got to try to back them back down. Find them a four hundred thousand dollars house for two hundred fifty thousand yeah. is what I got to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, which is not going to happen. No, no, it's not, not in this market. So you just you know, and and time there. Um, and we all we've all done. It. There's times we've just completely lost clients of people. Yeah. They're discouraged. Well, uh, Charlie, to give you a quick update on what really happens, that couple that was trying to buy the 230 mm -hmm. and are good for 180, yeah. they were actually a young couple. They're living with her family, and her job had been a little sporadic. So you think they're going to run out and buy 180. I'm still in touch with them today. And what they're doing is he's going to be longer on the job so we can count more overtime for him. They still want to get in that market of 230, 250 based mm -hmm. on they are comfortable living with her family. Right. They are, but that, that, that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. So they're working on their finances so that they're able to buy in that two thirty, two fifty. Yes, great. But at least I gave them a plan. But it, right. before it was, it was, we couldn't do it. Yeah, so not at that. Yeah, and so one minute, oh Jordan, just forget your one minute, okay? We're going to keep going. <laughs> okay, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, well, I'll ask this question next week then. Excellent. Uh, because I was I was getting ready to ask you something about uh, 
about that. So, okay. anyway, we're going to continue this discussion next week. So, for Candace DeArmond, David Crow, this is Charlie Butler. Have a great Sunday. You've got real estate questions but don't know where to get the answers? Tune in here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as Charlie Butler, Evansville's own real estate expert, shares the latest news, info, and insider tips to help you make smart real estate decisions. Find him online at charliebutlerteam.com. This program has been paid for by the Charlie Butler team. From the Kate Foppel Ford Studios, this is News Talk 1280 WGBF.